1966 Buick Riviera by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello Buick fans, are you ready once again for another one of these great Monster Hobbies unboxing videos? Well today we have another one of these really cool, really stylish Buick Rivieras from 1966. Another great thing to compete with like the Studebaker Avanti and other awesomely designed cool things out there back in 1960s land. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with all your friends and family. Let's get it up to 100 likes so that everybody that's into Rivieras can find this video. And now without further ado, let's go down to our Buick showroom and see what's in the box. Style beauty and grace all await you tonight in our review of the 1966 Buick Riviera by AMT. Now this is the second generation Buick Riviera. The first ones came out in 1963 and this one is a body reskinning that's based on the 1966 Oldsmobile Toronado. However, the Toronado was a front-wheel drive car and the Buick Riviera was rear-wheel conventional drive. So, looking at the box, we have a beautiful picture of a real Buick Riviera on a nice autumn day, which is kind of kind of befitting the times that this video is going to be coming out. So, we'll just turn the box up here. And now this kit was designed in 2000, and this was at a time when AMT was comp competing with Tamiya and Ravel and Monogram and they were coming up with some really amazing, excellent kits. This car has 90 parts in it. It's a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up. It requires glue and paint. Now unfortunately, this car model was um, part of the things that got ruined in the High River Flood. So it didn't ruin the box, but I had to store it by a window and some of the color has faded off as you can see here. You see it's nice and silver in this part but kind of pinky and washed out here. That was the side that I had to face to the window. However, we just zoom in here on this panel. We can see it says it's a factory stock replica, separate frame and suspension, detailed 425 cubic inch V8 with dual quad option. And then we have French and other languages here. And we get this nice side view of our model on this side of the box. And just zooming back out again. You can see the color difference here. How it faded out. <laughs> but anyway, so there's our Buick Riviera. And now I'll just open up the lid and show you how AMT packed this back in the day. So we move our lid over to here and you can see our nice instruction sheet which we'll review next. Then we have our chrome pieces in plastic. We've got our body just sort of put in upside down. Uh, this time around there's no cardboard in the windows to protect the roof from getting squished. We've got a nice little old replica folder, so you can subscribe. It's a bi-monthly magazine for Ertl and Racing Champions collectors. I'm not sure if this exists anymore, <laughs> since everything now is online. We have these nice white wall inserts. Our glass, packaged again in a bag so it doesn't get scratched. And then we have our grey plastic components. A rubber band, interesting, unusual. And then we've got our red tail lights, our new, new for 2000 AMT tires, and last but not least, our little tiny decal sheet, which is stuck in the side of the box. Gosh, I'll take that out and we'll review it later. So now, let's go and see what our instructions are.
And here we have our Buick Riviera instruction sheet. And this again is one of the nicer instruction sheets, more modern from some of the other ones. And it opens up this way and then folds open like this with another panel back here. Opening that way for a three page fold out and of course front and back. So we will just zoom in. Okay. So right away we are confronted. <laughs> confronted is a strong word. We are confronted with our Buick Riviera instructions. And of course we've got the nice picture of the real car on that nice autumn day, just like on the front cover. We have our specifications. The engine is a 425 cubic inch V8, 360 horsepower. This is the last year of production for the Buick Nailhead V8. 179 were built of the V8. The transmission is a three-speed automatic super turbine 400. The heavy duty suspension. In the front we had independent ball joint, link type stabilizer bar and a coil spring. And in the rear we have a three link and tractor bar, coil spring, 3.42 posi drive traction rear axle. The brakes are power drum front and rear. Wheelbase is 119 inches. The overall width is 78.8 inches. The overall length is 211.2 inches. Uh, the shipping weight is 4,180 pounds. Uh, 1966 total Riviera production was 4, 000, or 4, 45,384. And the 1966 base factory price was an astounding $4,424. So quite a good bit of history. As we go into the next panel down here, this is of course the read before you begin. And if you have any problems, just phone this number. Of course, this is a bit different now. But anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at our first panel. And here we have the first half of the assembly for our Buick. We have the two cylinder heads right here and here. And this time, unlike some of the other instructions I've reviewed, they show both sides, left and right, of the engine going together. Now here we have our engine block hooked up to our transmission. And it's nice that they actually have the indentations for the cylinder heads inside the engine block. We have our oil pan here and our front cover. Now it does say to paint them orange, but I have seen Rivieras in red, so it could be a very red-orange, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, that's our first panel. Now we get into the second panel here, and we have our valve covers right and left, our two four-barrel carburetors, the distributor, starter, alternator, power steering pump, our belt and pulley arrangement, and our fan. Our next panel, of course, shows our Buick wheels. And here we have the tire and wheel assembly. You assemble four as shown. So we have our wheel retainer and our wheel back, or they call it the inner wheel. The black vinyl tire, the white wall. This is an insert. And what they say here is paint the recesses flat black and the rest of the white wall is white. So. This is not a full white wall like in the 50s, it's actually a narrow white wall. So you need to paint the inner portion of this black to match tire, of course. And then here we have our Buick wheels. And of course you're painting the in, inside bits between the blades, you're painting that flat black. And if you're really skillful, you can paint the Buick Chevron inside on your wheel ends. <clears throat> And then here we have all our body colors and the interior colors that match. And there's our strato cloth and vinyl bench seats. 
Madrid grain vinyl with cloth inserts. So you can see a lot of research went into the making of the instructions on this model kit so that we can actually build our model precisely the way that GM did. So we have a regal black, you can have a green, blue, white, and black interior. And then uh, your, okay, so that's Strato vinyl bench seat, all Madrid grain vinyl. Strato cloth and vinyl bench seats. So you could, okay, so you would also have a cloth and vinyl seat. So blue, plum, and black. And it goes on and on. You have Regal Black Riviera Gunmetal, which was a special color. It only had a few interior options. Astro Blue Midnight Blue Riviera Gold, another special color. Verde Green. Turquoise Mist, Shadow Turquoise, Riviera Red, another special color, Riviera Champagne, another special color, Riviera Plum, another special color, Shell Beige, Silver Mist, Riviera White, and Riviera Silver Green, both of these being another optional color. Carpeting is keyed to interior color except when interior color is white. Carpeting, dash, dashboard, and steering wheel column wheel should be black. So there is your Riviera painting and interior match. And now we go into the interior on our instructions. And this is the good old days of <laughs> the competition between Ravel Monogram and, and Tamiya Japan. When we had the separate side panels, the separate seats, dual separate here, separate firewall, and master cylinder and Power steering pump, pump, <laughs> master cylinder and brake booster, pardon me, and uh, our steering box, and then of course we have our steering column and steering wheel, and this is model kit perfection, all sitting on a separate chassis end here, oops, and uh, very beautiful, well done models, as we will see when we open up the plastic. Oh, and this kit, unlike the other two um, modified stalkers that I reviewed a little while ago, every part in this kit has a purpose. There isn't uh, something extra that got added in, you know, through the production run and then um, has nothing relating in the instructions. So here we have a beautiful six-piece exhaust pipe system. Eight pieces if you include your manifolds. The separate X frame that will glue in here. Of course, you got to put your engine in first. And we've got a separate radiator and radiator hose, which again, the radiator hoses in a lot of the model kits are either missing or they, um, <clears throat> they are not supplied, I guess, which is the same thing. <laughs> anyway, okay. So now we're going to look at the multi piece suspension components. For the rear suspension we have the drive shaft which will go onto the end of your transmission which will mat up onto the rear axle which has independent shock absorbers, a rear differential cover, a stabilizer, and right and left trailing arms and upper control arms all in here all mounted onto the coil springs which drop into the frame. And up front we have our front sway bar going in and then as we turn this over, we get into the panel that shows our wheels going on. So special note when installing assembled wheels, when installing assembled wheels, place a small amount of cement inside each wheel retainer. So this is a, a beautiful thing because with the glue going into the wheel retainer, these ones will not squirt out accidentally and glue your wheel solid to your uh, to your axle. Okay, so you'll still be able to rotate your wheels. Then here we have our front suspension going in here with the left and right hand spindles. It is very easy to uh, make your own tie rods for these things and have posable steering. There's the front springs and our upper A arms all going together with our wheels going all the way around. 
Then we get into the wonderful body being assembled. And here it shows the rear red taillights going into the rear bumper, the license plate going in there with a decal, uh, the front grille, and the hood. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah. All right, and there's the license plate thing here. And then we've got our windshield and the mirror and our rear window going into our body. And it even shows you engine compartment and fender wells were body color. And then we come over here. And this shows the final assembly of our interior chassis and suspension all linking into the body here. Ah. I made a little mistake here. This is not hood, this is hood trim. <laughs> There's a hood trim goes up on the front bumper. Okay, just to clarify, because here is our hood. I guess I just didn't see it from the angle I'm standing at. So we've got our hood it goes on here and our air cleaner. This has the heater hoses, which are also a missing thing in a lot of the model kits and our upper radiator hose. And then we have our battery going in here. Battery is flat black, the caps are yellow, and the terminals are lead, or an iron color for your paint. And then we have our two side mirrors going on. So a lot of care and detail went into these instructions for our 66 Buick Riviera. So let's see if that same care and beauty has, has uh, transcribed into our plastic pieces. Now here's our redesigned Buick Riviera body for 1966, which shared the E-style body with the Olds Toronado. And as you can see, this is an amazing model kit. The uh, designers that made this for AMT at the time, I thank you very much for such a beautiful kit and for all the kits that came out in this era, which was truly the last of the exceptional model kits. So, our Riviera, if you notice here, actually has a indentation piece where the bumper would glue on, right in there, which is beautiful. Okay, we've got our nice scripting on here, and our mold molding, sorry, and there's our door handles, which are nicely pronounced and very crisp in detail. We have the rear grille in here by the trunk lid. And of course, I, we also have more emblems on the back, the actual keyhole for our lock for the trunk. You can see the, the beautiful graceful lines that Bill Mitchell and the designers at GM at the time had for this car. Beautiful work. Our windshield wipers are molded in with the nice grill in here. Then we also have our fender aprons which have the right type of shape inside, as well as our radiator support and the hood release catch all molded in here for a very beautiful model. And if we turn it upside down, you can also see the roof has a proper headliner, as well as sun visors and the little dome lights in the back here on our B pillars for our roof. Now there are some mold marks in here there's one that's sitting up on this side and one that's sunken on that side, as well as two under here. But where they are in relation to everything should be covered over by the chassis. Although you still might want to file these flat just in case it sits up on the one side here in the final assemblies. So again, very beautifully done. And thank you, old AMT, for giving us such a wonderful model. Now, one thing I'm just gonna, gonna show everyone here there's our Riviera hood, and we'll get into that in a minute. But you can see that the fit and finish on this is nice and tight, and it will look beautiful on your finished display model. Next up, we have the parts tree that has the hood and our front suspension component on here. Now let's take a look at our hood. And this again is masterfully done. 
you've got the Riviera letters right along the hood edge, which are pretty hard to pick up here. Well, you can kind of see them. And then this nice chrome trim that goes through the center of the hood. Underneath we have our ribs, but there is no fireproof mat molded in here. There are a few mold marks going on. Uh, there's our hood catch and all the rest. Nicely detailed underneath here and a beautiful looking hood. I suppose I should also mention the control arm, since I forgot that. <laughs> Beautiful detail on it. You can see, of course, all the, the proper components. There's our steering linkage in the front. And our, our uh, members here. Turning it over, we have places for the springs and the front spindles. And everything is molded beautifully. Next up we get into our multi-piece chassis, which is quite a beautiful, beautiful arrangement here. And one thing you'll notice is here's the spare tire underneath, and the gas tank is bent around for the spare tire to fit in, just so that you have a nice low trunk area, and the tire is underneath the floor, just so it won't be sticking up on you. But unfortunately, because the Riviera is a smaller type of car, the gas tank has to be put somewhere, and this would be a slightly smaller fuel cell than some of the other cars of the time, but again, has to go somewhere. But just look at the beauty on this. We have all these holes here for the frame to lock into. We have the proper type of floor pan arrangement for our feet to go into. Just beautifully well done. And turning it over, of course, here you would have your your mat in here on the real car. And there's your spare tire drop down quite a ways. Anyway, we've got a carpet molded in. There are some mold marks here and here, but they are put in a good location because our back seat would cover that and the front seat would cover this. And then we've got a mold mark there and one there. But again, the door panel comes along here, goes across, and then covers that over. So you will have to scrape this because there's a bit of flash, but overall it will work out perfectly. And these bumps here are not mold marks, they're actually part of the floor mats. So again, very nicely done. And of course we have our 1966 Buick Riviera used under license, molded right in there. So I'm just going to move this off to the side for a minute and show you the perimeter X frame. Just zoom back a little. There is our GM Buick X frame. This is a carryover design first introduced around 1958 when uh, they got rid of the perimeter frame for lightness and went into a, a side supported body style similar to a unibody. Uh, all right, so just take a look at the beauty of this frame. This is like a real frame. We have the curvature for our axles and everything to fit through. And then we've got a nice engine compartment with the motor mounts molded right in, as well as, as the cross braces and everything else go in there. And if we bring back the floor pan assembly, you'll note that it goes in, fits in beautifully with all the holes that are in here. And these holes, of course, are for exhaust pipes. But again, perfect fit and finish. You cannot discredit this kit for not having an excellent fit and finish. 
Now to further on with our undercarriage components, we have our exhaust pipes, both front and rear, with the four mufflers on there. Then we've got our control arms for our rear axle here, the rear axle cover, which glue on there, and more supports and license plates. And if we turn this over, you can see the nice crisp detail on the rear axle. Beautiful work again. There are two, a few mold marks in here, unfortunately, and they do impress right on that circular part of the rods or, or the the shaft for a rear axle so again you're gonna have to use some needle files and some filler to get that together every excellent model kit must have a few flaws I imagine now our next parts tree is a little bit of a mix we do have our front uh, bench seat here and then we've got our radiator hoses actually our heater hoses pardon me we've got our shock absorbers here and our front and rear springs we have this wow multi-linked rear differential or sorry drive shaft <laughs> a multi-linked drive shaft look at this one two three sections with the little end here then our a arms and our spindles. So let's just take a look at this. Usually I do the interior all together, but because this is molded on like this, I'll have to do it this way. You can see pleating in here. Now this this could actually be it's sort of a it's a bench bucket seat if you look at it because this center console here should fold downward on the real car. I'm not too sure though, I haven't seen it done in a real Riviera. Uh, and there's our steering wheel there, beautifully done. And we've got our springs and again, lots of a multi-piece drive shaft. On this side of course we see our mold marks. So you can either try to address these or carefully glue this drive shaft in. Keep that in mind that those little things will be there and try to glue them so they're sitting up in the drive shaft well. And uh, there we go for, for those components. We also have our steering box and our front sway bar, which again are molded beautifully and very highly detailed. And now we have another parts tree that clearly displays the Buick 425 cubic inch engine with an automatic transmission which is a very nicely molded engine block. Our block, of course, is attached to our transmission. Here we have our radiator. We've got our fan belt arrangement, belts and pulleys. There's our battery. Not sure what this part is. Kind of got bent and folded over. Anyway, there's our dashboard. Here we have our cylinder heads, our intake manifold, our nicely detailed valve covers, there's our uh, exhaust pipes, or sorry, our manifolds, exhaust manifolds, the oil pan, the two four barrel carburetors. One of these is, oh, there's our power steering um, fluid, as well as our alternator and the starter. And there we have our nice firewall with all the wires molded in and the blower assembly for our, for our fresh air. Here's our radiator hoses, front engine cover, the fan, and our steering column. And now I'm going to bring these up to the camera so you can see the amazing detail. You can see all the rocker arms sitting in here. And of course our spark plugs along the bottom. There's our beautifully molded motor with the frost, frost plugs in there. Which is really cool, really nicely designed. There's our radiator, and you can see our dashboard here. My hands can stop shaking. <laughs> it's got the long speedometer in there, as well as all the other features. The big glove box right there. Very nicely done. Again, same with the dashboard. Excellent work. This was at the time when AMT was at their height, 
Let me turn that over. Look at the uh, look at the timing chain cover and the water pump. Just perfectly done. The only flaw with this is the mold marks, which unfortunately you just can't get around. But look at in the carburetor. You can even see all the uh, the jets in there and everything. Okay, so excellent work. And another thing that was interesting with the kits in this time is that they actually ribbed the back of the firewalls and not so much in this dashboard, but it gives some extra strength in the plastic, which is quite nice. Oh, and then there's another beautiful thing here. If you look at the engine, there's a, a ridge inside. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a ridge inside there, and then on here, there's little tabs that stick out just slightly, so that this the engine actually interlocks, and there's no alignment pins like in the old days. Usually the alignment pins you had to cut off, because a lot of the older AMT kits were used so many times that the alignment pins didn't align anymore. But with this system, it will always align. And now we have our final gray sprue and in this one we have both our left and right hand interior panels and as you can see because they're separate you get excellent detail in here you even get the proper Buick door release mechanism or the handle for it as well as all the nice pleats on our bench seat and the little vents here for the trunk and then here we have our wheel retainers and our wheel backs which the wheel backs look perfectly like how a rear drum brake backing should look. And again, very beautiful work, very well researched and very well molded. Of course, look at these door panels. I mean, look at the detail on there. Just excellent. True mark of perfection. Again, for our bench seat, our rear bench seat. And then look at all the detail on the brake drums. We have the square backing here and everything else. Just perfect, perfect work by AMT. And again, if we flip this over, see there's those ridges that are in there. Reinforcing ridges, I guess, to uh, help from the parts warping out of the mold. So again, excellent work from AMT and very very beautiful model and now we have my most favorite part of all the model kits the chrome tree and we start off with these beautifully molded buick wheels these are accurate to the real riviera and buicks at the time as well as our buick front grille and this is that top piece that would glue in there and our rear bumper here and there's our beautifully molded chrome air cleaner the rear view mirror and our left and right hand side mirrors. Now let's take a look at these wheels in better detail. Look at how nice those wheels are. The bolts are in the right place. They even have open slots in the back and of course the Buick 5 bolt pattern and the little hubcap area here. Then we have our grille and it's even got a little hole so you can line up your license plate perfectly. There's the top of the grill, which would go in here. And of course our mirrors. But look at the detail on that air cleaner. Just like the real thing. And our rear bumper. And again it's got a hole there for our license plate. Although you really wouldn't need, like here you do on the front bumper, because of that uh, triangular shape there so you need something for your square rectangular license plate to mount to but here it's sunken in in the license plate shroud so they didn't really need a hole there but they still put one in so that you can align your license plate perfectly 
Next up, we have our glass components with our front and rear windshields, as well as our taillights here, which are molded in red. And the taillights are actually quite nice. You can see the, the detail inside them. There's a couple of horizontal lines going in the back which is very much like the real taillights of the 66 Buick Riviera. And our front glass actually has a little spot here for mounting our rear view mirror on. And the glass was actually double bagged in the kit, so zero way of scratching it with other parts in the box. Next up we have our Firestone Deluxe Champion tires and the white wall inserts. And again, a lot of care and detail went into these tires. They are much, very similar to the Monogram 1956 Ford Thunderbird type of tires with this big uh, depressed area for the white walls to pop into. That being said, if we look at the white walls, remember I said it was a uh, double line type of white wall tire? Well, in this ridge here is your white wall. And then in the outer part, or the inner part, you're supposed to paint that flat black. Again, very beautiful. There are some mold marks on the back of the white wall inserts, which again can easily be sanded off with a block of sandpaper. If we just put that back here again and look at our tires, you can see the uh, Firestone logo put on here. And again, the nice insert. There is a beautiful tread pattern on these tires, and they are nondescript on the back. But again, nice and beautiful. Just a little bit of sandpaper, and our wheel spinning tool should be able to make these look like they've actually hit the road. So again, nice, excellent work by AMT. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet. It's a tiny one. There is a... Uh, sticker here for our air cleaner and a few for under the hood and then we have a uh, Montana, a Mississippi and a Texas license plate both front and back and that is it for our decal sheet. And that completes our look at the 1966 Buick Riviera model kit by AMT Ertl. Well, model car fans, I sure hope you enjoyed watching this great video of us unboxing the Buick Riviera right down here in the Monster Hobbies showroom. And hopefully you can find one of these out there if you want one in internet land. This one is mine, part of my own personal collection, which I don't want to part with because I want to build it when I retire. So, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it. Pound the notification bell with all your friends and family so that everybody on planet Earth can see this thing when I upload it. And let's get it up to 100 likes, and until next time, we will see you down here at the Monster Hobby Showroom.